This FizCast is going to look at a very commonly used example in collision physics, the Newton's Cradle. As indicated in this diagram here, the Newton's Cradle consists of several balls suspended so that they can swing freely, and then when one or more of the balls is lifted from one end and allowed to fly down and collide at one end, then one or more of the balls will fly off at the other end. And the question we'd like to examine here is, how many balls will fly off after the collision, and how does that depend upon how many balls are coming in before the collision? Here's a simple animation that shows how the Newton's Cradle works. Here we have one object coming into the collision and one leaving the other side after the collision. We can change it so that there are now two objects coming into the collision, and you see there are also two leaving the other side. If we increase this to three, we see the same effect, three arriving before the collision and three leaving, and we can even make it four in this example. The slightly unexpected behaviour here is that even though there's only one object that's sitting still before the collision occurs, there are always four objects that leave because four have arrived. And it's this matching of the number of objects before and after the collision that are moving that we want to understand. So let's make a simplified sketch of the system we're trying to analyse, that is, a group of identical objects, all in contact. It doesn't really matter how many of them there are, and what we want is we want to have some number, let's say an initial number, come moving in to collide with those. And then after that collision there will be some other number, and again we don't want to presume how many, let's call that n final, moving away after the collision. And what we'd really like to know is how does this nf depend upon ni, the final number of objects moving after the collision, how does that depend upon the initial number moving? We might say that the ones coming in here have a speed we'll call vi, and the ones that are leaving have a speed vf. Now in this collision, if there are no net external forces during the collision process, then we know that momentum will be conserved. So in our momentum conservation, the initial momentum before the collision here would be the first mass times its velocity plus the second mass times its velocity plus, and we'd do all of those until we got up to the last one which we'll call Ni, that's how many we've got, times its velocity as well. Of course all of these quantities here are vectors but we're doing this as a one-dimensional problem, so for the moment we can just ignore the vector nature and these things are all going in the same direction. Now in this problem, all the masses are supposed to be identical and they're all moving as one before the collision. So that in fact means we really have a common factor of m, the mass of each one of those objects, times vi, and how many do we have? We have ni, lots of that. So there's our initial momentum, and we can see that the same kind of approach applies for the final momentum, that is just after the collision, where again we have some identical masses all moving off with some final speed, and we will actually have n final of those. So our momentum conservation now, if momentum is conserved then pi will equal pf, no change in momentum, that tells us here that ni mvi must equal nf mvf. And of course the objects all have the same mass so that cancels on both sides. We can rearrange this expression to show that the final velocity after the collision will be ni divided by nf multiplied by the initial velocity. So at the moment this doesn't really tell us how many objects have to leave compared to how many came in, but let's for the moment imagine we had two objects come in and one object leave. What this expression here tells us is that the final speed of that one object will be 2 divided by 1 times the initial. It will leave at twice the speed of the initial objects. And that's true to conserve momentum. And you can try some other numbers in there. What if we had six balls flying into the collision and only one leaving? It would have to leave with six times the speed. Again, that doesn't tell us the number that we need. In fact, momentum conservation will still be obeyed, 
no matter how many objects leave, it just tells us the velocity they have to leave with. Another way to write this particular relationship that might become useful in a minute is to write that the ratio of those velocities, vi over vf, is the inverse of the right ratios of the number of objects coming in, nf over ni. Now in these collisions, as we've already mentioned, we expect them to be essentially elastic collisions. These are hard objects colliding without sticking to each other, and there'd be very little energy lost from kinetic energy. There might be a small amount of noise or a little bit of, of, uh, of vibration in the strings holding them, but essentially they are elastic collisions. What that means is the initial kinetic energy must equal the final kinetic energy. No kinetic energy has been lost. So what is the initial kinetic energy? Well, each of those objects will have kinetic energy a half m vi squared. And because we've got a certain number of those initially, ni, that will be our total kinetic energy to start with. And we can do quite a similar looking expression for our kinetic energy finally, a half m v final squared. And of course, that's the kinetic energy of each of the objects that are leaving. And we're saying, in principle, we have nf of those. We can rearrange this equation here. Of course, the masses cancel off both sides. The half cancels off both sides. And we're left with a relationship here, again, between the number of objects and their speeds. In fact, in this case, it's the square of the speeds. So this can show us, for example, now that nf divided by ni, that will actually equal vi divided by vf all squared, because kinetic energy involves the square of the speeds. Now, instead of writing vi over vf, we can use this relationship that we had from our momentum conservation. So this means it must be nf over ni squared. And one way to look at this now is that nf over ni must equal nf over ni squared. In other words, whatever this number is, nf divided by ni, it's got to be the same as its square. And there's only one way we know how to do that, and that is if the number itself is 1. If nf over ni equals 1, then it's also equal to its square. The number of objects that are leaving the collision, moving afterwards, must equal the number of objects that were moving in before the collision. So, importantly, you can see both of these conditions, momentum conservation and kinetic energy conservation, that is, elastic collisions, are important to tell us how many objects are moving after the collision. Momentum conservation by itself doesn't tell us how many objects are moving, simply the relationship between the velocities and the numbers. But if we also have kinetic energy conservation, then the number that leave the collision must always equal the number that arrived before the collision.